Greetings, my name is Norma Zinochiwe and I'm going to be continuing my discussion of spiritual gifts and today we're going to talk about the spiritual calling, signs of a spiritual calling, how a calling can manifest and it's a very exciting topic, very timely. A lot of people are going through a spiritual awakening globally and it's not just black people it's people of all races and at all colors and and i believe what spirit is doing is reminding us of our common humanity i have observed people of indian origin coming to africa to undergo initiation for ubungoma i have observed someone from korea also coming and initiating within our african tradition uh, not sure whether it was Wungoma or something else, but people of different races are being called for initiation. You have a lot of healers who are Caucasian that are practicing African traditional healing methodologies as Abangoma or Izinyanga herbalists. So they are different healing specialities depending on what your ancestors practice. You may have a single gift, you may have multiple gifts. In my previous video, I talked about Ubungoma. Ubungoma is a Nguni healing tradition and Umgoma is primarily a diviner. Their role is to pass on messages that are received from the spirit realm. They reveal hidden things, maybe things that have been done to you, maybe family history maybe issues that need to be healed in a particular bloodline. Those are just examples. There are many different ones. Abangoma are initiated formally. They need to attend initiation so that they have a mentor who teaches them how to handle the spirits and the guides and how to interact with them, what to do when they're attacked. Because the reality of the spiritual journey is you will be under attack. And I'm often amused when people associate African traditional healing or indigenous healing methods with evil or sorcery or witchcraft or the dark side. It's quite amusing because once you actually study African spirituality intentionally and you speak to healers and maybe you are gifted yourself and you start to practice, you really do come under attack. So if, it, if what we do is witchcraft, if it's evil, why would we be under attack? Surely we should all be on the same side. Surely there shouldn't be any conflict. But clearly what we do interferes with the works of darkness because we are primarily light workers. And that is why healers actually come under attack. The reason why we wear beads, we wear crystals, um, some of us wear metal jewelry, others wear bangles like copper bangles and things like that, is those are the protective mechanisms that our ancestors have given us that use the science of vibration and color in order to ward off certain energies, in order to draw our ancestors and spirit guides closer to us so that they can protect us because what we do really disrupts the works of evil and i go it reminds me of a verse in the new testament where somebody is jesus is speaking to people and somebody then says to him um you know words has it that you actually are casting out evil spirits um because you somehow have a connection with evil and Jesus's answer at the time is a house divided amongst itself will not stand. If I am casting out evil spirits by the power of evil, why are they leaving? Surely we should be on the same side. Um, so that's how he, he actually squashes that particular argument. Because if Satan's house is divided, if he was using the power of Satan or Beelzebul to cast out demons, those demons belong to Beelzebul, so surely he shouldn't be able to cast them out. And if he casts them out, surely they should be able to come back. He would not have any power over them. 
So he really talks about the house divided. So if what traditionalists and indigenous healers do is evil, it's demonic, they actually shouldn't be able to do it because what they do really disrupts the work of evil in people's lives. And there wouldn't be so many testimonies of people that have been healed, that are now successful because of the intervention of indigenous healers. Uh, if that was the case, then there would be no testimonies. Just like you have Christian testimonies of people being healed, you have testimonies of people being healed after visiting a healer. So it's very important that we distinguish witchcraft, sorcery, dark magic from healing and the different methodologies that healers use. I, I don't deny that there are scammers. I won't even call them healers. They're scammers. There are scammers that have studied the patterns and the methodology because there is a lot of information about indigenous healing out in the public, on Facebook, on social media, different social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, etc. There's a lot of information. So if you really wanted to be a scammer, it's would be very easy you know you go and you put on some beads you get yourself some animal prints you set up a facebook page and you tell people that you can do things that you actually can't and you demand money up front so what generally happens is with scammers is they will demand money up front they will exploit your desperation for healing they will manipulate you by sending you messages, repeated messages to say, no, 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 send the money now and we'll do something just like any other scammer, be it a 419 scam or anything else. There's always money that is demanded up front. Uh, healers do ask for money up front because especially if you're divining, there is a, a concept in spirituality of reciprocity. So if you want me to get messages from your guides, I need to speak to my guides. My guides will speak to your guides. It takes a lot of energy for my guides to reach me and give me messages by way of visions or intuition or clear, you know, clear cognizance or clear audience. It takes a lot of energy to cross dimensions from the spirit world to give a human being a message for somebody else. That is why we have a concept in this Zulu called Ukanisa, meaning to give light, meaning you must give an offering, normally a financial offering. In the olden days before money, you gave a healer something, a chicken, a cow, a goat, depending on the size of the task or the work. That was known as Ukanisa. That is a, a token of appreciation to the healer who is living it also reflects as a token of appreciation to the guides that that healer works with because that healer's guides are going to speak to your ancestors and your guides and god or the creator in order for you to get the answers that you seek in order for you to be healed so that is why healers ask for an offering some healers will do some work first. They'll tell you how much they charge. Then they'll do the work and then they expect you to be paid. Other healers will say, well, I know that you don't have the money now. You can give it to me later. Some healers, particularly those of us that work with angelic guides, Istunua, will sometimes do the work for free. What I do do personally is if I have to do a reading, a tarot card reading, get a message that is specific to you from your guides, I will actually charge a fee and I'll ask for that fee because I need to prepare. I need to ask my guides. My guides need to speak to your guides. And when we do the reading, I need your guides to come through so that we get the messages because my ancestors can't speak for your ancestors. The job of my ancestors and spirit guides is to call yours into the space so that when we meet and we have the reading, I am getting the messages that are coming from them. It's not my people speaking anymore. My people are simply there to bring your people because you and your people are strangers to me as a person, nine times out of ten. So they bring your people to me. So that's why Siakanyisa. But just going back to a spiritual calling, I've spoken about my journey and, and how I 
found out and I took up my calling and I'll agree that I was reluctant. The truth is many people that have a spiritual calling are actually very reluctant to take up that calling because there is danger. You are going to be under spiritual attack, as I said, and there is a lot of work that is involved. Maintaining a high vibration requires work. You need to cleanse regularly take spiritual baths you need to purge which is very uncomfortable for some of us not my favorite thing to do but i have to do it every now and again you you have to steam um, you have to go to the river to pray you have to go into nature you have to really make sure that you're doing things that maintain a high vibration to connect with your guides you have to keep your space clean you can't be having casual sex if you're married like i am sometimes you have to abstain from sex because you know that you're going to the river or you're going to the mountain and so on if you're doing prayers on behalf of people you need to have a high vibration otherwise you won't be able to communicate with your own guides and they won't be able to invoke that person's guides for them to help them because i invoke my guides my guides speak to your guys so that's whole thing of i'll speak to my people to speak to your people that's what happens in the spirit world have your people call my people and that's how the healing happens that's how the magic happens but it is incredibly hard work sometimes you have to get up at three in the morning between three and five in the morning if you're woken up because there is a battle going on and you need to pray or there's a battle that's coming and you need to pray. Those are the things that happen. So that is why you find spiritual people, spiritually gifted people who have a calling will avoid that calling. They will run away from that calling. They will deny. They will make sure that they don't have to do all of those things because it's very involved and it can be very difficult. But there are a number of signs of having a spiritual calling. Uh, when I speak to people and they ask me about their gifts, I will ask about dreams because dreams are a very good indicator of whether you have a calling. There are many videos about dreams and signs of a spiritual calling, so I won't really go deep into that. But I do like the one video that I did watch by a healer called Widra. She's um, her Twitter handle is Big Beautiful Widra. She also has a YouTube channel and she talks about signs of a spiritual calling. And I like the signs that she outlines because it's actually a wider range of signs than just the dreams. So normally with the dreams, it will be wild animals, the big five, lion, elephant, buffalo, um, cheetah, sorry, not cheetah, um, leopard, and um, just let me just go through this list again. So the big five, it's the lion, it's the leopard, it's the buffalo, and it's the elephant, and I'm forgetting the fifth one, but you know the big five. Those are common dreams. You may then dream of snakes, especially if you have a gift associated with water or your guides have affinity with water. Big snakes like pythons or an anaconda, different colors. The dream of a snake when you are spiritually gifted, you're just shown the snake. The snake is not attacking you. It's not chasing you. If you dream of a snake that's chasing you or attacking you or biting you, that is not your ancestors. That is an enemy. So let's be very clear about that. You do get dreams of snakes because snakes are also manifestations of evil spirits, evil energies, entities that are sent against you. That the way you dream of and a snake that is an ancestor or that is a manifestation of an ancestor is different from the manifestation of an enemy that is attacking you. So you may also have dreams of water, calm water, ocean, river water. Water dreams don't necessarily mean that you have a spiritual gift or a calling. Sometimes they just mean that you need to go for a cleansing. 
So you need to spend time, pray, speak to your guides, get clarity, consult a healer to be sure. You know, don't sort of dream of water and then rush off to go for initiation because maybe you're not even called to be a healer. And a lot of people have found themselves going through an initiation process, come out of the initiation and they're unable to heal, they're unable to see. And it must be very frustrating because then you get other people who have never been for initiating, but initiation, but they're practicing. I've never been for a formal initiation. I am undergoing initiation through my guides. They teach me and they guide me and they show me what to do. And that's how I've done it. I have worked with healers for certain things like cleansing um, here and there to learn certain things, but I've not gone for formal initiation. And that is because of the nature of my gift. I don't have a gift. I don't divine with bones. But there are people that do. And when you do have a gift, because you have a healer in your lineage who is of Nguni origin and worked with those tools, they will require you to go for initiation because of the nature of the gift. You, so those, those are some of the dreams. Water, so as I said, not always a sign that you must go for initiation. Sometimes it's a sign that you need to have a cleansing. You may dream of animals chasing you. A common dream of animals chasing you is cows. Cows are indicative of your ancestors because if you are of African origin, particularly Nguni, cattle were highly valued and you may have had cattle, owned cattle as a family. So your cattle could be a manifestation of your ancestors. If they're chasing you, it's because you have not taken up your calling you 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 have delayed and they're in getting impatient with you um, you may dream of a dog or dogs chasing you again the domestic dog is a sign that your ancestors are not happy something is wrong something needs to be done maybe you haven't taken up your calling or there's a problem in the family that needs attending to a ceremony that hasn't been done to different things so dreams alone are not enough of a sign to say i have a calling there must be other signs you must have your clairs operating your clairvoyance your clear audience your clear aliens if you watch my previous video on spiritual gifts there's more details about that those manifest from when you're a child so you don't even need to go to an initiation to start having all of those manifestations Remember, the gift is something you are born with. You are chosen before you're born. You are assigned these spiritual gifts. You are assigned an ancestor or ancestors and guides to help you to operate in those gifts. And by the time you go for initiation, whether it's a self-initiation or it is a formal initiation with Ukovela, you already have the gift. The gift is manifesting in different ways. You are simply then going through initiation for you to learn how to communicate with your ancestors and how to do the spiritual work. So there are a lot of contentious conversations out in the healing space about my gift has been stolen. I went for initiation and my gift was stolen. I, and I will talk about that in a different video. I don't think your gift, your gift cannot be stolen from you because it's encoded in your DNA to say, for instance, in my example, Nomatemba has a gift of prayer, right? Her gift is to pray for people. Her gift is to divine for people. That is in my DNA. And I may choose not to operate in my gift, not to go to church and preach the word and pray for people. It doesn't mean the gift goes away. The gift is there. It doesn't go away. It can't be stolen from you. What may happen when you encounter a dodgy healer or a dodgy mentor or a sorcerer is they can create a psychic link or a soul tie with you by different means and they can tap into your energy and extract that spiritual essence, that power, that energy that powers your gift and use that energy for themselves. So remember the principle of energy is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's just transformed. So you have been given a spiritual gift 
It manifests as an energy that allows you to heal people through prayer, as an example. If you meet a sorcerer, and there are many, and they perceive that you have that gift, they want to steal that energy for themselves so that they can make money, as an example, or they can pray for people and make things happen. So they can create a soul tie with you, tap into the energy of your sacral chakra and your solar plexus chakra, which is normally where these energies reside, and they steal that energy from you. Your gift is still there, but you may find that you are unable to operate effectively. You are unable to pray for people. I had a, went through a phase where I couldn't even pray. I went through a phase where I couldn't even pray for myself. You know, I, I couldn't pray for other people. I, I, I struggled, you know, to, to just find the energy to get on my knees and pray. And that is because I was battling, I was in a spiritual battle with a certain individual who was working with powerful sorcerers. And that person had created a soul tie with me. Um, because, you know, at one point we were friendly and we would talk and this person worked sorcery against me to create the soul tie and using that soul tie, this person was taking my energy and I felt worse and worse with time. I didn't even have energy to do basic things like cook for my family at times. I didn't have the energy to pray. I had barely enough energy to just go to work, do my work, and after work just collapse in front of the TV and watch Netflix or YouTube or whatever. I didn't have the energy to do anything beyond the basics to keep my life going. And I lived my life like that on autopilot for close to a year until my spiritual awakening as I began to awaken spiritually, the things started to make sense. The dreams that I was having about this person, um, the dreams that I was having, you know, about about the sorcerers they were using. They, these people would appear in my dreams. But because I was spiritually tapped out, I had no idea what was going on. So part of my awakening, the reason for my awakening was my ancestors wanted me to understand that I had this person that was in my energy, this person that I knew that was working against me and that person was tapping into my energy <laughs> and and leaving nothing for me. And they, of course, were not happy because they gave me the gift. They needed me to, to, to use my gifts to work and help people. And there's this individual that is just randomly tapping into my energy and doing whatever they need to do with it. And so they had to put a stop to that. And ever since I woke up and started fighting back and I started my spiritual journey and gone through a lot of cleansing, did a lot of inner work, shadow work, healed a lot of my inner childhood wounds, which drew this character to me. Ever since I did that, I've been able to help people. I have energy to do things after work that I didn't have energy to do before. I have energy to, to you know, start creating I, I spoke to a friend of mine and she suggested that we do a podcast, but I went and I bought a professional recording microphone and that microphone sat in its box for the better part of a year, if not almost two years. I didn't have the energy to even open it and start recording and start podcasting. I've only been able to do so now, just as I've been able to push this person and their um, sorcerer friends out of my energy and cut them off and cut the links and cut the soul ties. Now I have the energy to do the spiritual work. So I'm just going to go into the spiritual calling signs. But as I said, you, 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 it's, it goes beyond dreams. You also have to receive other signs. You also have to make sure that your gifts, your clairs are already in operation because the calling is just an elevation of, you have this gift, we now need you to do X, Y, Z, and A, B, C with it. So you could have a spiritual gift and not have a calling to work with people because the gift runs in your lineage, 
or you have a calling to actually work with people because your spirit guides were people that worked with people and helped people and healed people. So among the, 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 the spiritual calling signs is one, synchronicities. So seeing videos on your timeline that speak to whatever it is that you're wanting to do or thinking about or worried about. It's the same as when you go to church and that day the preacher preaches a word that speaks directly to your situation and you feel like the preacher is speaking to you. That is actually the alignment, the synchronicity. Your guides woke you up to go to that service for a reason, just like your guides made you go to YouTube or made you go to do Twitter or made you go on Facebook and Instagram. So you see certain messages on your timeline that resonate with whatever situation your guides want you to resolve. And they find you the knowledge and they feed it to you. I mentioned the clairs, so hearing and seeing things that other people don't. And that happens even before you go for any initiation. Anxiety. Anxiety is very much a part of the spiritual calling and the spiritual journey. And you're anxious because in your spirit, you know things that other people don't know. Or you know how much more serious the situation is than people actually understand. You can feel depressed and demotivated. As I mentioned, when I had that guy working his sorcery in my energy, I had no motivation to do anything. Um, you can be easily angered. Again, the mood swings very much a part of your spiritual calling. You may neglect personal hygiene, and that's a feature of depression. You don't even have the energy to take a shower. You actually ask yourself, am I going out today? Okay, I'm not going out, so no, it's fine. I don't need to shower. If I do need to go out and be among people, then yes, I will drag myself and have that shower. But you will neglect your personal hygiene because you don't have the energy because of the depression. You will lose interest in things you enjoy. Again, also part of the depression, cluster of symptoms of depression. You may eat poorly, so you may eat too much. Maybe you're a comfort eater, so you feed your feelings. Or you don't eat at all, you have no appetite. Again, also linked to depression and anxiety. You may have overwhelming fear that pre prevents focus. And sometimes that fear is engineered by people outside. Um, external factors, entities that are sent against you, spiritual and psychic attacks. I have tweeted about this on my timeline. Those can exaggerate your fears and then you'll be paralyzed. You won't do anything. You may have confusion. You just don't know where what is going on? You don't know where anything is. You can't find stuff. A spirit of confusion actually does exist. It can be sent against you. I've had dreams where I am at work and I don't know what's going on. I no, cannot see whether I'm coming or going and it's a problem. So those, those, are, those, those are also possible. I've mentioned the dreaming of water, dreaming of beads. So your ancestors may present beads to you in different ways. Maybe you just see the beads. Maybe you are wearing them in your dream or maybe your ancestors are wearing them. So usually the beads are a sign that you have a calling. Beads don't necessarily indicate ubungoma. Some beads are given to you for the color correspondence to help bring your guides to you and to allow you to connect with them. It doesn't necessarily mean you've got to be umgoma. You may well have a gift of prophecy. I don't have a gift of umgoma, but I'm wearing five strands of beads. And we'll talk about beads in a different video. That requires one all on its own. You may be socially isolated. You may experience inexplicable emotional pain that usually happens if you have an angelic guide is tunua can make you very emotional for no reason and it's really just a message it's just leaning into those feelings and inquiring and asking for guidance as to why you may be socially isolated you may actually experience major illness trauma loss financial loss losing people you love and uh, that also comes with the journey. You may have panic attacks. You may have relationship problems. 
very common when you have a spiritual calling because sometimes the people we are in relationships with are not the right people for our journey so our guides get impatient and they push them out of your energy you may lack patience you may have a sickness that no doctor can cure or understand you may not be able to sleep so insomnia linked again with depression and anxiety it really makes um possibly you, you you know you are actually spiritually gifted sometimes you have insomnia because your guides are saying you are under attack don't sleep so you may have to stay awake because you need to pray then hence the insomnia so if you wake up between 3 and 5 a.m usually sometimes at midnight sometimes between midnight and 2 a.m it all depends on what your guides are trying to say or trying to do that insomnia is a call for you to get up and pray speak to your guides understand what's going on and you'll find when you wake up and you do it you'll be able to go back to sleep just fine so there are other signs of having a spiritual calling if you speak to your mother or your parents um if you for instance were born with a call that's that membrane that covers your head or it covers your entire body i do write about that in my blog on my blog that is a sign that you are spiritually gifted or you have a spiritual calling there's things that they used to do back in the day when the child was born with a call we don't do them anymore um, so you may have to then just consult in order to get the necessary alignment with your guides so that your gifts can manifest and your calling can be activated you may be born with your umbilical cord wrapped around your neck According to my mother, the umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck three times. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that can happen. It creates a difficult birth, but it's also a sign of a spiritual gifting or calling. Um, you, you may actually, those are just a couple of the other signs. So your signs need to have, you need to have several signs, not just one. And then you need to consult a healer. A healer can then initiate, can, can, inquire of your guides and tell you that you have a calling uh, and then tell you what you need to do next you need to start your prayers maybe you need to go for initiation maybe you need to speak to your guides but don't rush off to initiation with the nearest healer or mentor you find get guidance first from your ancestors and spirit guides so that you're going to the right mentor you are being initiated in a place where they understand the ways of your ancestors and they are willing to work with your ancestors and not impose, you know, you know, how they do things in that lineage. So your your ancestors will identify which mentor you should go to. They, you may dream of your mentor. Your mentor may dream of you. Or your intuition may tell you that this is the right place. Sometimes you may go for initiation. They may do certain things, but at a certain time, your ancestors decide it's time to go. Don't resist. Just leave. Because maybe the people there have done what they need to do for you. But at the same time, you don't want to be jumping from one mentor to another. Um, you also want to make sure that you are consistent and you find impandi or a spiritual lineage that works well with your ancestors. So that's really for those that have to go through a formal initiation, particularly if you have Unguni and or Ndao guides. For those that are doing self-initiation, and I just say use the word doing in loosely because the initiation is actually being done by your guides. They will teach you what you need to know. They will send you people. They will send you resources. They will send you the knowledge. And all you need to do is follow the instructions and implement. But I will talk about that in a different video. But for now, I just wanted to talk about the signs of the calling. You need to understand that it is a process. It's not an overnight thing. Don't go into a calling with the intention of, okay, let me just do this and get it done and go back to my normal life. No, this is for good. This is forever. This is for life. <laughs> I, I, I have to wear a headscarf or wear the beads for my hair for life because 
my calling demands that I protect my crown chakra from certain energies. Um, because as a healer, I'm a light worker, I'm going to be under attack. So I have to be ready. So there's no going back to normal life because sometimes normal life requires you to do certain low vibrational activities, which your ancestors may not necessarily subscribe to. So I hope you found this video useful. And I really appreciate all the engagement, all the comments. Uh, do let me know what else you'd like me to talk about. Um, hopefully one day I will get to a point where we can do this live and we can really interact because I do find lives quite fun, quite entertaining. Um, I've seen other healers do them, but we'll get there slowly but surely. But thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.